The phone conversation between fantasy veterans Bob Harris and Matt Waldman is a quick and dirty rundown of players, units, or teams from Sunday's games. Feel it or fuck it is our instant verdict on the fantasy value of a player or situation, not the ability, effort, or character of the player. This is just how two old-timers in this industry talk when they got a lot of cover in a little time. Waldman, week 12 is in the books. Lucky week 13 heading our way. I can't wait. <laughs> what do you got, a hangover from Thanksgiving? What's going on with you? Ah, it's all good, man. There's just some interesting performances. An unusual uh, week of NFL action. Volatility on top of volatility with uh, a variety of interesting players showing up on the radar. So I don't believe you. Let's see if this is true. Let's find out. Let's ask you about Mike White. Is he a bye week option? <clears throat> Feel him as a bye week option. I, you know, as long as he's a starting quarterback, it turns out, you know, he can get something done. Again, so we're heading into the time of the year where ideally I'm not fucking with anybody, right? I mean, everything is as it should be. All my players who got me where I'm at now and taking me into the playoffs, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to outsmart myself. Say, oh look, I, there's a Mike White now. I should consider playing him along with the guy that's gotten me to where I am right now. No, fuck it for that. But but as a target of opportunity in a situations of desperation, yes. And by that, probably means a second quarterback in uh, in Superflex or two quarterback leagues. Zach Wilson, fuck around and find out. That's basically what happened with Mike White twice, you know, in the past couple of years. So, you know, Mike White, pretty decent in the pocket. Um, you know, as long as they... That, you know, I'm sure that when defense has decided to game plan against him a little bit more and you're not p- facing the Chicago Bears, um, things can be a little bit tougher up and down for Mike White. But the one thing that we know for sure is that he understands how to play from the pocket and he doesn't get too crazy with everything. So as a result of that, regardless of whether it's Mike White, Zach Wilson, or Joe, Joe Flacco, Flacco, or right. Joe Namath, Garrett Wilson. Um. Uh, You know, fuck him for this year, right? I mean, I want to see uh, more consistency from this offense before I'm relying on them. Again, this is like a reliance versus a a desperation need. Desperation need, he's probably at the top of the list, right? Because, you know, we saw the range of possible outcomes, the good side of that uh, yesterday, and maybe there's more of that good side coming with Mike White. Um, But but in general, I'm not taking chances. I want – I want – I want safer plays. I, I guess I guess I live in an ideal world in my head where I'm heading to the playoffs in every damn league and all the players that took me there are in perfect health and nothing's going on. I feel bubble wrap around, you know, I'm in Bob's head right now in bubble wrap, which might be the only way that I'd be safe for like all of about a, a nanosecond <laughs> before some <laughs> creature came in there with like some sort of <laughs> horn and some saw teeth and, you know, looking like a combination of a great white shark with the jaw speed of a piranha. So, um, yeah, Garrett Wilson, y- you know, the, the great thing about Garrett Wilson is you see the unbelievable quickness and speed on display. You see the route running is is really skillful at this a- stage of his career. The pass catching is a little dangerous. It still looks like he's doing math with that, but I like where the um, – you know where the where the work is heading. So if I felt like I had to take a chance on someone because somebody's got to gamble around here, then I'm gonna say <laughs> Garrett Wilson. How about Zonovan Knight, my man? So feeling this is just to keep him away from uh, somebody else, even if I don't want to play him in case the Zonovan Knight we saw yesterday is the Zonovan Knight going forward, and that would require two things: Michael Carter to be hurt bad enough to leave that opening, and James Robinson uh, to have you know, not demonstrated enough. He was a healthy scratch, right? Or we presume healthy uh, yesterday. So, and I, you know, I mean, what, what we're, you know, what you take from this is that, you know, it's hard to come back from Achilles injuries maybe. And that little run we saw earlier this year with Jacksonville maybe was a bit of a mirage. So um, I'm assuming that to be the case. So if so, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to, I feel snagging Z- of a night to make sure somebody else does a sat snag uh, him because, I've been playing this game long enough to know there is a running back nobody ever heard of who wins somebody a title uh, before it's all said and done almost every damn year. So, yeah, I feel him for for taking him off the market and hopefully not having to play him. Now, I don't remember this number specifically, Bob, but I did mention last week in the Football Guys Roundtable to um, 
one of our staffers who said, Samaje Piran, why am I going to pick him compared to like picking up uh, a guy like along the lines of, oh, Kadarius Tony? And I said, because if you need a running back and you have position allowance where you have to have one, you realize that in week 16 last year, there were, um, I want to say, I think it was either 14 or 19 backs who weren't starters who actually delivered in the top 20. I mean, like right. it was a high number, like a very high number. And the numbers mm. weren't like, um, you, you know, they are going to say, well, he's only going to deliver 40% of what Joe Mixon did. Well, if Joe Mixon had a Josh Jacobs type of game against Seattle, it might have been 40%. Um, but otherwise, it's going to be good enough every week. Zonovan Knight, listen, I lo- like Zonovan Knight's receiving skills. But what I saw between the tackles was lowercase bam as opposed to all uppercase bam that his um, nickname included at North Carolina. I don't think a lot of that was necessarily his fault. It's just that that he had good blocking, um, and good blocking is going to help. But I thought Ty Johnson looked a little bit better um, between the tackles, a little quicker, a little better um, after contact. Knight is combative, but he didn't earn the BAM nickname for me this week in the NFL. But I would take a chance on him for right now. Now, do you think, speaking of Jacobs, do you think he stays a Raider in 2023? Are you feeling I that? Believe, I believe if uh, yesterday was a job interview going forward that he probably <laughs> aced the, that job interview. Uh, you know, strong finish is always uh, something I believe in, and that was as strong a finish you could have. To a phenomenal day look it's been a good year i think yeah so to you know more directly answer the question yes uh most likely on the franchise tag uh yeah so uh so and he, he's gonna make a lot of money and the raiders are gonna be happy they had him i feel like when this regime came in from new england dave ziegler the gm and josh mcdaniels they probably had new england things in their head of you know they bring brandon bolden they draft a couple guys they you know they have Amir Abdullah, you bring in Amir Abdullah. So they have all these pieces. I think they probably envisioned, you know, something similar to what they did in New England, cobbling things together. And they did that almost exclusively in New England, except when they had somebody who required them or forced them to not do that over the course of the many years in New England. And right now they have a guy who forced them not to do that. And we talked about this going into the season, Matt. I know you and I talked about it. Do they, do they treat, you know, Josh Jacobs like a rental car since they didn't pick up the option, just run the wheels off him? Well, they're trying and they're not having any luck and he's not all that dented and beat up and he's looking pretty damn good and he's winning them games. So uh, I'm guessing that this uh, this will get worked out, whether it's with the tag or and most likely the tag. I don't think they're going to pay him longer. I'll say this. I think that the social media reaction to Josh Jacobs and our community and elsewhere. And when I say this. I'm saying this understanding that any minute I can look around and get hit by a bus for some of my own takes. Um, But I will say that the Josh Jacobs overreaction in the Hall of Fame game to Zamir White getting some decent reps and Jacobs getting early looks was the Titanic tweet of, of 2022 in the fantasy community and the football analysis community as a whole. Um, now, I'll say this. What we failed to look at when we talked about this was Josh McDaniels, actually what he did in Denver as a head coach, not one of Bill Belichick's right. toadies. And as, a, and as a head coach, he drafted after, you know, Mike Shanahan had, oh, Michael Pittman, Ryan Terrain, Selvin Young, Andre Hall, um, Peyton Hillis, and a few other guys, and none of them got more than 300 yards worth of um, um, production on the ground in that year. Well, McDaniels came in, drafted a young back out of Georgia who became running back 18 that year with 1,100 yards total with Correll Buckhalter, the distant second in the committee is like running back 41. And then the following year, well, he was running back 18 once again with Correll Buckhalter running back 52. Um, with all all over 1,100 yards and a a good bit of touchdowns. I think if we overreacted to Josh Jacobs as a whole, now, I like Jacobs, so I can can exclude myself from this company proudly in this moment before the bus hits me with some other take I had, (laughs) is that, that, you know, Jacobs, um, you know, when you look at Jacobs, he probably would have been around RB15 to RB18. If he valued him as a running back too, I think that was probably the fair way to go. If you're saying, if 
you know, otherwise, if you would have had to count on, well, Darren Waller getting hurt, yeah, probably. Okay, fine. Um, Hunter Renfro getting hurt, not as likely. And counting on the fact that two high shells were going to dominate the league and now you're going to run gap plays against underweight, undermanned defenses um, relatively. And if you predicted that and actually made that public, you're awesome because nobody did that I know of. Uh, even came remotely close to that. And I think that's what made Josh Jacobs elite. So yeah, I think he stays a Raider in 2023 and they probably try and keep him in the contract or renegotiate a deal between two to four years at most. I would say more likely two to three if they can keep something friendly. They might do that. Otherwise, we might see Amir Abdullah as the Dion, next Dion Lewis and Maybe. as Amir White and a committee that we've seen before. But Josh Jacobs at 24 years old, averaging 1,278 yards um, a season and have only missed six games in four years. For a running back, that's pretty good. That may be worthy a second deal. Chase Claypool, though. Chase Claypool in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Are you a Chase Claypool fan, Bob Harris? Fuck him. Uh, most all of them in Chicago, most everyone in Chicago, not named healthy Justin Fields and David Montgomery and maybe Cole Komet. I don't know. Now that Darnell Mooney's hurt, I, I'm heading into you know the end of the season. This, the games matter. Every game matters. I want some fantasy meat on the bone. I need something to gnaw on. I need some some. I need something to, to come back. And like you know, as always, anything can happen in a, in a given football game. But my expectation is not any of these Bears receivers going to get either a high end. Uh, you know the 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 workload necessary for high end production. Uh, on a regular basis or consistent basis or a consistent enough basis for any given week me to say, yeah, this is his week. Yeah, I don't think he's great at any single thing that he does. Um, and I think that's what you need to be a primary wide receiver in the NFL. And I think he's a, he's a slightly better version of Kenny Galladay in terms of where Galladay was heading to New York. Um, so I'm not optimistic about that. So I, I guess... I guess, you know, fuck him is also applies to Byron Pringle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it absolutely does. And, and and like there's pretty much any piece that you want to associate there, not one of the top pieces. And we'll see. You know, I, I don't think we'll be seeing much Darnell Mooney going forward. So maybe somebody rises up uh, and maybe it's one of those two and entirely possible. So if you're sitting there and you have room on your bench and, and you want to fill it up with something, sure, go ahead. Okay, well, our next our next contestant, well, he wrote a letter. Dear mom, dear dad, I've been I've been kidnapped by the evil man. I've left breadcrumbs um, so that you can find me. Um, but I give you a hint. I'm in the usual place, wide out in the open here. Um, but I don't think I don't think Wilson's gonna find me. Signed Elijah <laughs> Moore. And then I think I, the response was, um, dear Mister and Mrs. Moore. Um, we found your son exactly where he described, wide open and in the end zone. Um, signed, Detective Mike White of the New York Precinct. <laughs> I'm just wondering, are, is Mike, is Eli Elijah Moore may still be alive and we have a sighting of him, but is his fantasy hopes alive for you? Uh, no. No. <laughs> you know, not, 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 not to the fuck it level, because I'm keeping him and I still have him on rosters where I didn't need to churn to to find room for the hopes that maybe at some point, you know, something would start to click and maybe down the stretch, I have that guy that we saw signs of last year. Um, but, but I mean, uh, you know, there's an old uh, cliche and I like old cliches because I myself am an old cliche. Um, you know, hope is not a strategy. And I think with some, you know, some of these players, that's what you're doing. You're hoping that everything works out and that's fine. You know, as long as you have better plays ahead of him. And hopefully you don't need to rely on hope at some point because, again, it's not a stretch. Feeling them as a reserve, but churning them and when things start mm -hmm. to go sour, if that or something along comes better. Does Chigo Chigo Conquo come along as something better? <laughs> no. But, but honestly, you know, super exciting as a player and super exciting what we've seen of him. I'm just a little saddened that his per catch average was only 11 yards or almost 12 in this game. That's a big drop off from what we've seen so That's far. True. And like, right. So like, I'm really enthusiastic about his future. And at some point is this, you know, maybe this offense evolves a little bit. There's room for some receiving assets. We'll see what happens at the quarterback situation, but he's an exciting player. And I'm, you know, and, and so I'd, I'd like to see him succeed, 
there just seems to be like a, you know, like more than two mouths in this offense. Seems like a lot to feed in the receiving end of things. And there's more than two mouths. They have some really good young prospects here. So um, kind of fuck them in that regard. But uh, but feeling them totally is a great play. I'd be, Player. If, yeah, if I was going to have to pick, I might be kind of feeling Austin Hooper on the way up. Just on the sense that the rapport is starting to build. You see what he can do with a quarterback that actually trusts him to go up and get the ball. Something that in his scouting report always looked good. Kind of like the thing about Josh Jacobs and his scouting report was that, you know, the centerpiece to this 46440 running back from Alabama wasn't that he was fast, it was that he could catch the hell out of the football. Somebody might want to use him as a receiver more often. Um, I don't know what John Gruden was thinking until like last year. So, <laughs> but here we are. So, Austin Hooper, feeling him? Uh, you know, again, pretty much the same as you. I mean, uh, tight end is a is a barren, desolate wasteland. Uh, you know, so so there. I don't want to totally rule out the possibility that I I myself might have to play some of these outlier assets, which I would consider him to be right now, just given the nature of this offense and and the number of weapons and guys kind of on the rise there a little bit. So hope I wouldn't have to use them. Um, but but realizing the reality of the position is I might, and I probably couldn't think of worse ones. Titans jerseys look like water, so that might be a good thing. So it might be a mirage, though. Kevin Walker, top 10 running back next year. Um, yes, feeling it, totally. I mean, he's going to be. I mean, you know, a couple of low rushing total games isn't going to change, you know, his role, where he's at in this offense. And, and <clears throat> even, you know, I think he's kind of, you know, now assumed control. And whoever has control gets to hold control in the Pete Carroll world, it seems to me, uh, recent experience says. And so, uh, you know, he's got the baton. I think he's going to hold on to the baton. And, it, and whoever's holding on to that baton, and especially a guy with his skill set, he's going to be top 10. Listen, stats give us a nice picture. I'm all for stats giving us a nice picture. But fuck rushing yards over expectation. Fuck DVOA. Fuck all that EPA. Fuck all that stuff when it comes down to it somehow giving you the same level of of clarity that you see with footwork scheme understanding um and processing within the context of what the the offense is doing and kenneth walker's patient he sets up his blocks he understands how to um, set up defenders into blockers and he knows when to use that acceleration button and he has quite he an acceleration yes and he can create <laughs> he can create in situations that are difficult to create in the the blocking wasn't there sometimes he got met in the backfield by 320 pound dudes on a on a frequent enough basis but he also scored two touchdowns in what you would call a subpar effort overall for that right. offensive line i'm feeling him <clears throat> as a top 10 running back right I, I have to and by the way i just want to acknowledge i was like a little keener on rashad penny going into this draft i felt Me both too. of them were great values and you could you could you could pick the one you wanted but you know for the the whole baton theory whoever held the baton going in is going to hold on to the baton until they can't hold it any longer. And in Rashad Penny's case, uh, those struggles were real. All right. Foster Moreau, not this season, even though he's certainly worthwhile discussing as part of that, um, you know, part of that oasis in the desolate wasteland of the low end of tight, tight end one tier. But is he a tight end one for um, not just the re not for the rest of the season, but yeah, for the rest of the season. And then I want to know beyond. How about that? Yep. For the rest of the season, for sure, uh, Darren Waller's contract suggests not, but also Darren Waller's ability to stay on the field suggests maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think... I like I, Moreau. Yeah, look, I... Look, solid play. I think he's going to wind up somewhere else if he doesn't wind up with a bigger contract in in um, Las Vegas at some point. But, yeah, I think that, you know, made a clutch catch for to, for a game-time play um, yesterday. Yep. He was certainly close in a couple of other games. And, you know, there were some interceptions thrown where they were trying to force the ball to him. Um, that tells you that they know what he can do. Amir Abdullah, is he the next Deion Lewis for Josh McDaniels? Or did we already answer this question? Fuck this question. Uh, no, this question. So I, I have more to say here. The karate kick was amazing. Uh, horrible that you get penalized for that yeah, uh, right. in the NFL. But, but I feel like just so, like, I don't know if there's going to be a Deion Lewis, but if there was going to be one, it's him. I don't think that's worth holding on to uh, in redraft leagues no. uh, unless something, you know, I mean, maybe not even as a handcuff. So, no, kind of fuck him. Yeah, I, I, this year, fuck it.
DeAndre Hopkins, another year as a fantasy starter in 2024. Feeling it? Uh, feeling a little bit, yeah. I had questions in my mind coming into this year, even, you know, before the suspension. And uh, and part of that, though, is based on the notion that Kyler Murray seemed to be evolving as a passer and was looking at other options and maybe getting a better feel for this offense. Obviously not. Um, so, <laughs> I know that's not happening yet. So, um, we'll see uh, if uh, if all these pieces are still around in the future. Kyler Murray's going to be around. DeAndre Hopkins could be around. I think this contract makes it so he can be moved. I don't know if the coach is going to be around. We'll see about that. Uh, that might be the, the difference maker there. But for, but it's things stand right now. It's things sit right now. Uh, yes. I'm going to say DeAndre Hopkins. Absolutely. He had old man game entering the the NFL. He is the Harley race <laughs> of wide receivers. He entered his... He entered his era looking like an old man. He's going to leave it looking like an old man, but he will still scare the bejesus out of every cornerback he has to face until that time is over and will be noted and as one of the greats of all time. They will talk trash about him after the fact. They might do that too. But, you know, listen. Anyway, Marquise Goodwin. Is there anything there to look at? Fuck him, no. No, yes, he's Marquise Goodwin. I mean, he is the you know he is the Markel Marquisius Goodwinist guy we've seen. That's fine. He'll have a big game. He'll surprise you. You'll be excited about it. You'll want to invest in it, and then it'll let you down and disappear. Yeah, I'll say this. I like the fact that he's making tough catches over the middle. Um, I haven't really seen that from his game as often as um, you know people hope that he would deliver. Um, but yeah, fuck him. I just think that this was an outlier game against the the Raiders. But Olamide Zacchaeus, is Dwayne McFarland feeling him? Maybe not to start him in a, even if there was a fire. But what if there was a twister? <laughs> Maybe if there was a twister. Um, like, uh, so uh, again, no. I mentioned the whole meat on the bone thing here, right? Yeah, yeah. I need more meat on the fantasy bone if I'm going to get you know interested or enthusiastic about playing someone heading into playoffs. Uh, I'm not going to let spike games. This is the 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 bane of our existence as fantasy managers. Uh, our inability to you know understand that something is a spike or a brief momentary flash in the pan, and we expect it to continue. I'm say this being as guilty of it as anybody, maybe even more so. Uh, I am the fish. You throw that lure in the water, I'm going to chase it, right? And uh, that's what Zacchaeus is. He's a lure. He's going to have a good game, and you're going to go chase it, and then you're going to be sadly disappointed when you bite it. That hook tears half your cheek off. There you go. Well, I'm. I'm willing to believe that Olamide Zacchaeus could be better than Elijah Moore down the stretch um, could based be. on I, these types of things. Sure. But again, that doesn't make him a guy that you're sitting there to want to plug and play. But if, you know, I do like the fact that Fox Brothers Barbecue does make does make some of that meat that's on the bone um, in Atlanta Stadium. And, you know, if they could guarantee me there's some meat on the bone there, then maybe Ol- Olamide Zacchaeus would, would be in my lineups. But he's a, he's a reserve at best in deep, deep leagues. Brian Robinson, you know, he has a friend who's a big hat guy. I love the big hat. Big hat might have been the funniest thing I've seen in a month. But that aside, uh, other than the people photoshopping my face into Brian Robinson's on Twitter, that was almost slightly funnier. Um, but the uh, but but generally speaking, uh, neither feeling nor fucking. He is a he's a he's he's an asset on a team. There is enough meat on the bone for him. I don't I'm not a super enthusiastic about the week to week production, what he does with that volume. But I love volume, and as long as there's volume for running back position, I will I will willfully accept it. And and if I need to use it, that's not a that's not that's a that's a real strategy. That's not hope. That's hey, here's volume. Let's take it. Well, you know, I like that, but I'm kind of insulted that you didn't like really the the rendering for the Sean Taylor That's sculpture nice. that 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 Daniel Daniel Snyder really wanted to roll with first before he was talked out of it. I've got it pictured on the screen here. It's very nice. The, yeah, the I, stick figure. The stick figure is that's how that looks about right. How about this one though? They said cuz Adam Harstead said that what about the endorsement? You forgot that they wanted the one with the endorsement dollars. So, I have the I had the self-portrait of Daniel <laughs> Snyder uh, mooning the league with dollars coming out of his ass. So, nice. there we go. Very yeah, nice. see, I mean that, I can, you know, talent right there. You know, I I tell you my grandkid drew it but that wouldn't have been Very true nice. so um all right let's roll let's wrap this thing up let's get down the stretch here Juwan jennings nah fuck him <laughs> um, again you know nice game could have some of those nice games 
expectation not that he's going to have a lot of those nice games. Yeah, he's he he's got a fuck around and find out game for you in fantasy. Though <laughs> I like I like some of the skills that he has. I do too. But more importantly, will Kyle Shanahan be the 49ers coach by the end of 2023? You feeling that? Feeling that, yes. Uh, but beyond that is uh, all dependent on what happens with Trey Lance. I, I say fuck it. I don't think he's going to last because I think he's going to fuck around and find out that you can't keep putting Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel out of the game in situations, even if you're winning right now with it. I don't think it's going to happen. There's, he's going to do this one too many times to try and prove a point, and the point's going to be proven on him. I don't think he lasts. Be able to fuck it. Uh, fantasy owners bitter when their superstars are taken out of lineups. Oh, I'm totally feeling that. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know who would do that. Man, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. Uh, other than all Mc, of us. I don't know to Sharon McCaffrey. But, okay. but you know, that bus with Sermon not plastered on the back of it probably uh, still has me feeling a certain way. Gotcha, so, gotcha. so how about that? Kyron Williams, are you feeling that? <clears throat> Uh, what is that like? Uh, I want to, you know, use a uh, politically correct, uh, the tallest skyscraper in where? Uh, in Omaha? I don't know. Uh, like I think in the really, field behind me of grass. Yeah, really flat. So, yeah. um, you know, I mean, yes, he's the he he is the apex piece of a um, horrible offense. Yeah, fuck him. No, I don't believe in him. Don't believe him. he can catch. That's about it. He can catch. He's he's tra he's he's not even as good as Travion Williams. Um, he just may get more opportunities. So yeah, you can like the opportunity, but I'll I'll feel Jake Ferguson as a futures guy. But again, you know, there's a long list of guys. I feel like Jake Ferguson, Jake Ferguson, Dalton Schultz. It's kind of like Austin Hooper, Chigo Quanquo. You know, it, it's just the the old Houston version to the old mm. Dallas version. But that now it's Tennessee guys who could hurdle grown men have my attention uh, always. But uh, beyond that, it's just my attention. Yeah, Cam Akers, long term. Who? Cam? Who? Cam? Cam uh, Akers. Cam Akers? Uh, yeah, fuck Cam Akers. Okay, so I think his ship has sailed, right? I mean, I think you know the opportunities came in, and sadly, you know, an injury was involved in that. And, and, uh, and but but since that time that we had the the comeback last year, which we all thought was amazing. But was the production really amazing in that comeback, or was it just the comeback that was amazing? The the fact that he was back on the field and a great credit to his work effort and diligence and the medical staff and all those great people who helped him get there. Um, but the production has not been probably at the level that it needs to be according to everything we've seen uh, this season. If you can buy him as a dented can at the price of what you could buy a dented can back when we were growing up, then yeah, I would take a chance on Cam Akers because it may happen, and it yeah, may actually get to that. Make throws. a difference. Yeah. So, but anyway, I was feeling this. So you know, happy Thanksgiving. Love you. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Love you. Bye.